This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you by Lads to Leaders. Are you looking for something to help your kids learn to lead both now and in the future? What if you could find something that offered year-round opportunities along with a yearly convention to help hone skills and learn to deal with competition in an encouraging and loving atmosphere? In 1968, Dr. Zorn began a program with eight boys in hopes that they would learn to lead in their churches and communities. Now, 55 years later, there are 20,000 boys and girls each year that participate participate in activities that are true to the mission of Dr. Zorn's program. Lads to Leaders has trained over a quarter million young people and brings whole congregations together with competitive and non-competitive events, activities for people ages 3 to 103, and Bartimaeus events for special needs participants of all ages. The convention takes place in 10 cities of the U.S., as well as the countries of India, the Philippines, and Romania. The leaders of the future are trained in the present. So go to ladstoleaders.com to check out all all the things this program has to offer. That's lads, the number two leaders.com. Welcome into the Helping Healing Humor with Ben and Travis podcast brought to you by the Always Endure 5K on April the 16th. Get all the information and register at alwaysendure.com. We are back with Trey and Lee, and we could not be more excited uh, to have them with us. As I stated in the, in the first episode, uh, we kind of worked up the courage to ask you guys to be on. And so we're really uh, honored to have you with us. And uh, more importantly, thankful to have you as brothers and sisters in Christ uh, in this journey together. You're out there helping folks in their marriages. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we just want to get right down to it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask, I guess, the always endure question of the day. So what steps could and should churches do to improve marriages in their congregation? Well, I, I think that churches are honestly God's vehicle today for helping marriages and families. Um, the world, we're amazed at the world that is currently looking for answers on how do, how do we do kids? How do we do teenagers? How do, do we do family? How do we do marriage? And, and many of them are looking to bad sources. They're looking to Hollywood for answers. Uh, they're looking somewhere. And I think churches have got to step up and provide that. Uh, we're amazed at the churches where we go and do workshops. Uh, the amount of, of people who go at the church and go, man, half of our people or a or two thirds of our people are local community members. Uh, it is a fantastic outreach in your own community. Uh, you you won't have you may not have people show up for gospel meetings, uh, but you do a marriage workshop or a family workshop, and your community folks will show up. In fact, we have not done a workshop in the past probably two to three years where the visitors have not outnumbered the local church members of the church. There's that many folks that come uh, because people just want to know. Folks are just begging for some information. How can I have a better marriage? And uh, churches have got to be that vehicle for that. And so you, you need to always have, and you need to be promoting this in your community. I think every year, Your church needs to provide someone to come in and do a workshop on marriage, family, parenting, any of those three. You can rotate one of those every year. You need to have a Bible class at least once a quarter for on marriage or for young families. Uh, Those are topics that your young families are begging to hear about. Uh, And it doesn't always mean you have to have somebody Um, you know, like Ben, who is who is expertise in that field and can lead that. Sometimes it's simply saying, hey, we're going to buy a marriage book and we're going to just, you know, read chapter one. And and next week we'll get together and talk about chapter one and what you thought about it. Do the discussion questions in the back. Uh, But you just, you know, so many churches right now are finding out somebody in their church is having marriage problems when when that couple has reached the waterfall and their boat's about to go over. They have no clue that, you know, six months ago they were already having issues and it's not that church leadership doesn't know anything about it until it's just like, it's come to a head and somebody's walking out. And so churches have got to get upstream on how do we help marriages? Uh, One church that we know of has just recently purchased 
uh, about 30 books, marriage books. This time they're doing our book. Last time they used uh, five love language books. They handed every young couple in their church this book and said, in about a month, we're going to check in on y'all and see how far you've got on the book, how it's going and what we can pray about. And they're trying to catch those couples upstream with problems that they're having so that they don't catch them when they're going over the waterfall and there's not a lot of things that they can do at that time. And so here are these these elders and and church leaders who are now contacting folks going, uh, what can we be praying about? How are you liking the book? Tell us what you've learned from the book. And there's a little accountability in there when you hand somebody a book and go, I'm going to check in in a month or so and see how you're liking it. And so they, they do a lot of reading on it. What an easy way uh, especially if somebody says, we just don't have anybody that can lead a marriage class. What an easy way to, to bless a family by saying, hey, read this. And, and then we'll be checking in to see what we can be praying about. And then just texting. Can, is there something we can be praying about in your marriage? How you like in the book? Uh, we do that in our church in, in Childress a lot of times. Just send text messages going, what is there that we specifically can be praying about? All just really healthy things. Sorry, I nominated that answer. That's, that's, your, that's your wheelhouse. That's okay. <laughs> that's a great answer. And I'll, I'll brag on Will a little bit. He had the vision with our youth group and parents to do a um, using the book Sticky Faith. And we kind of do a little thing each Wednesday night. And I think the kids seem to be enjoying it, but I think the parents are eating it up. Like, you know, the information and the things that, that kind of study in that book together. And I think they're going away from it. Uh, I know our family has come home talking about what we're talking about in that class together. And I think, too, something that you just mentioned with them, if if a congregation's giving them a book to read, you're also starting conversations at, at home. Yes. Or maybe those couples are reading together. So those few minutes together each night reading the book or they're both maybe reading it separately, but go, hey, did you read in chapter one? Did you see that? You know, and and they're kind of having that that interaction at the same time. Yeah, we've had we've done a couple of things here in Childress. Yeah, we've got a lot of young families at our church. A couple of things we've done uh, specifically that churches can do. This is so easy. Um, a couple of years ago, we just we put on Facebook it, for the community, not for our church folks, although we had a couple of couples come that we were just going to we were going to order. Uh, 12 copies of the uh, Five Love Languages book. And if you want to come read this with us every Thursday night from seven to eight, um, read your chapter before you come and then we'll talk about it. And and we were, we had to turn folks away because we had more than what we could handle. And couple, we did, we did very little work. We just kind of came together and said, well, what'd you think about that chapter? Uh, did you do your, your discussion questions? Uh, incredibly, several of those couples that came to that group or now now go to church with us um, because it was a great outreach, a great tool. Uh, another thing that we did was on Friday nights, a lot of times Lee and I and a couple other couples would say to the young couples, bring us your kids. We're going to watch your kids this Friday night from seven to nine. You go do anything you want. Uh, our only rules were you can go home and clean house if you would like to. Uh, but but you let us have your kids. You go spend some time with your spouse. The only rules we had was you can't go on a double date with someone because double dates don't accomplish a whole lot when it comes to uh, to couples hanging out. You go eat, go see a movie, go whatever you want. We'll watch your kids. And we did that. We need to we really need to pick that back up again post covid of watching young couples, kids. And because there are a lot of young couples that go, we just don't have any place to leave our kids. We can't go on a date. And when they can leave their kids at church and you can throw in a veggie tails or play hide and seek in the fellowship hall, they think it's fun. The parents love it. It's a healthy thing. That's a great point because we've run into that too. And sometimes the older couples, you know, that have older kids, they're like, I don't have a place. I mean, the ones that are not old enough yet to stay by themselves. So that's a good, good recommendation there too. When we were thinking about questions and things to ask, and y'all have probably seen this from your ministry background, uh, especially me, like in my youth ministry background, I'm getting to the point now where I've been in youth ministry long enough to start seeing more of the older ones getting married. Um, And a lot of those teens or teenagers seem to be marrying kids or other young adults that don't have the same viewpoint on Christianity that they do. And so that's kind of where the background of this question kind of comes from on 
what do you recommend for people with different viewpoints on religion, uh, politics, or really just anything in life that is a major kind of foundation of who they are? And how can they be successful or, you know, is it almost are they running their head into a brick wall on trying to find success? And so what would you recommend to people that are that are finding themselves in those areas? Premarital counseling is is essential, really, because couples need to talk through some things before they get married. We you know, we've come across a few questions that we feel like are deal breakers. Yeah. You know, we've taught uh, a college age group before, you know, and we said there are things that you really need to discuss, like where are we going to worship? And if you can't come to an agreement, you know, that could possibly be a deal breaker. You need to discuss things like, uh, are we having children? We've known couples that did not discuss this until after they got married and one did not want to have children and was adamant about that. And, you know, that could potentially be a deal breaker. Um, but those are the things that you would hopefully discover in premarital counseling. Yeah, and that is just that is just a must these days is to have a good long engagement, some premarital counseling to be able to go through a bunch of the, the questions to know ahead of time. A lot of couples think that are engaged, hey, we'll we'll figure this out once we're married. And that's really kind of a big mistake because if you've got an issue with your fiance soon to be spouse and you're thinking, you know, they've got a character flaw, but we'll work on that post post marriage, um, post wedding. That generally it doesn't work that way. Uh, you're going to get stuck with what you had. You better fix it before you go in and and be an understand. You guys understand that. That is just one of those things that you, you just don't sit back and go, well, we'll, we'll figure this out when we get married. Love's going to fix it and, and we'll get some changes made. There are just some things that you need to go through and work out and engagements, we kind of get it mixed up sometimes. Engagements is the time when couples need to be evaluating ruthlessly one another. Evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. And then in marriage, you stop evaluating uh, and you start, you know, praising, hey, well done, good job, uh, and some appreciating them. And sometimes we mix that up. You get a young couple that's going to get married and they just appreciate and they don't evaluate. Uh, and, and boy, you can't do that. And you get married couples who quit appreciating and they're just trying to evaluate. And it's like, hey, you're past that stage. You know, you're going to have to get back to getting things figured out. But yeah, and that is a great question, Will. And, and we, we've seen that as well. It's been scary with how many people have, have exited the youth group going, here's my foundation, but I have found the person, you know, it's like, but they just, they hit 98 of the 100. So what's the big deal? And I'm going, because those last two are so important, like they're the foundation of who you are, but it just seems like, how can you, you know, I guess sometimes I feel like I'm beating my head against a wall going, understand this foundational thing that's made you who you are. And why are you all of a sudden just letting that go? Because you have, you know, ro rose colored glasses, you know, for this person. And so it just, it becomes scary, you know, and you lose a lot of sleep stressing over, uh, over some of these decisions people are making. People, people go in, young couples go into their wedding, knowing everything about their wedding. They have spent so much time, so much effort, so much money. They can tell you who walks in, when, what color they're going to wear. They know everything about the wedding. And they're so educated on the marriage part. And we got to get that. Somehow we've got to reverse that to where they know at least as much about the marriage as they do the wedding, because nobody's going to remember the wedding. Honestly, it's going to be the marriage that matters. That's the thing that people will remember in 50 years. Yeah, you spend all that time on something that lasts an hour yeah. and you spend so little time on something that is supposed to last a lifetime. And I know uh, I've, I've heard um, when we go back to that, that idea of the, you know, who you're marrying. I remember Lonnie making a statement, Lonnie Jones at some point made a statement that was something along the lines of you change the rules, you know, like when people got married and, and then they were all of a sudden they're like, well, we, when we were dating, we drank together. And when we were dating, we did this and we went to these places and all this stuff. And then, you know, one, one of the people decides, Hey, now that we're married, we've got to settle down. We've got to, stop living this wilder life or this whatever. And he's like, you change the rules on them, you know, like, and you expect that that's going to be okay. At some point you have to recognize not that those things are okay or right, but if it was okay when you were dating, 
you know, it doesn't magically change and people don't magically change when you put a ring on their finger and you say, I do there's, um, and so, you know, if this is my expectation, this is my reality, you know, disappointment is made up in between. And so many people live through that engagement with all these expectations but like you said, they don't really evaluate. That's such a, I love that point, evaluate. You know, that's the time for evaluating and looking into, and I don't think that gets done as much as it needs to. So, Are there some practical things? I know we live, it seems like more and more people are divided more and more. And so if we, like Will said, we may be 98 out of 100, but those two things, you know, that may be deal breakers. You know, how do you work through something like that? You know, it's it may be a huge deal to this person and not a big deal to this person. You know, what are some, you, you've talked about communicate. Obviously that's part of it. You got to communicate because if you just, Oh, I'm not talking to them anymore. And that seems to be everybody's approach. I'm just going to cut somebody off. I've known for years because on some little political or whatever thing, we don't see eye to eye. And so now it's over. And uh, how do we combat that? In marriage, there's always going to be things that you differ on. Uh, when we, when we're talking, we're talking marriage and not engagement. Um, we've got to remember we're on a team. There's things Lee and I don't see eye to eye on all the times, so, but there are times where we stop and we go, Hey, we don't have to agree on this. We're on a team. Um, I, I, you know, neither one of us may be wrong on the subject, but we're going to choose to, to not make one of us, you know, the victim or the wrong person, because, you know, when you're a team and you're one, if one of you loses, you both lose. And, and there are just going to be things in life that you're going to disagree on sometimes. And, and that's OK. Um, you know, marriage is about forgiveness and the better forgiver that we are, the better the marriage that we have. And, and sometimes forgiveness may not mean your spouse did something wrong. It may simply mean that they did something you disagree with or or like something that you don't or like someone you don't in a sense of politics or something else. And and you just have to go look. I'm not going to make a black and white issue out of something that's not a black and white issue. We've got, and I, I'm not sure why, we've got quite a few teenagers that listen to our podcast um, and will catch us from time to time out in town or at a youth and event. Uh, what would you say to those teenagers? You know, because it's, you know, it's easy sometimes to go, look, you, you marry who you date and they go, yeah, I've heard it. I get it. But it's like, it doesn't really sink in. It's like, what, what is the wisdom of 33 years of marriage that, that you would give to those teenagers in today's world uh, that seem to be bombarded by just tons of things? Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, that is a true statement. You, if you're going to date, don't even date somebody you would never consider to be husband or wife quality. You know, if you think I, I would never want to marry them, they are not, you know, then don't even date them because you will end up falling in love with the person you spend time with. And that's just a dangerous road to walk. If you're not, you know, if they don't have the same values as you, um, I would just steer clear, tell them to steer clear. Yeah. And then my, my thought process would be, um, Hey, look for, for quality people that are in quality places to fall in love with. Church, youth group is a great place to meet people. Uh, youth rallies, church camps. Um, and I know kids aren't looking to find their future mate, but you know, you're know, you going to have a lot better options meeting your spouse at church camp and uh, Christian university than you are at the bar on Friday night. And so you, the quality of people is much better. Um, and, and it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, if you find a, if you find someone that, uh, loves God and they're passionate about God and they have got God deep in their heart, pursue them. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. If there's anything we learn from, uh, the song of Solomon is, is she pursues him just as much as he pursues her in a sense of, uh, uh, in life, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, it doesn't always have to be the sit around on a boy and make let him make the first move uh, when it comes to just saying, hey, I'm interested in you. If you find a godly person that you're interested in, uh, start with a friendship. And that's where it all begins. Friendship is where build a great friendship. Fall in love with your best friend. Uh, marry them. Over time, they will turn into your soulmate. You do not find your soulmate. You don't randomly bump into your soulmate. Your soulmate doesn't happen instantly. 
you build a marriage with your best friend and in time through peaks and valleys of hard times and length of time, you build a soulmate. So this may seem like a, a different kind of question, but I'm curious, you know, we're that helping healing humor podcast. So uh, we wanted to know what, what role uh, would you say that humor plays in marriage and family? Is there a role that it plays in your relationship? I think absolutely. I mean, I, I think Trey's sense of humor was one of the things that I was attracted to, you know, before we were married. Um, yeah. I mean, laughter is good medicine. That's, that's a pretty fact. I love, I love, <laughs> I love when I can make her laugh. That To me, there are times now when we do workshops and we use, you know, we'll go and do the same workshop. She's heard most of my material. You know, she knows what I'm going to say and I'll throw out something a little different or some little goofy comment and I'll see her laughing and I'll think, yes, I made her laugh. You know, I love making her laugh and I love it when she picks on me. Uh, yesterday we're getting ready to go speak somewhere at a, at a lectureship down uh, in Texas where she's talking to the ladies. I'm talking to a group of mixed folks and she said, you're not using that picture, are you? And I said, yes, why shouldn't I? And she said, that's like 15 years ago. That's like false advertising. She said, you're, you're cheating. You don't look like that anymore. And, and she was giving me a hard time. And I was loving it because she was teasing me. And she said, she said you're going to walk into your class and everybody's going to go, that's not the same guy in the picture. I'm in the wrong room. Uh, and and it's, you just got to be able to laugh. And I feel sorry for people who don't. Uh, I feel sorry for folks who don't get marriage humor. We la we use a lot of marriage humor on our social media pages, and we get some people that are offended, and and that's all right. We tell them, hey, if you're offended by our marriage humor, you may need to go follow somebody else because <laughs> we throw a lot of marriage humor out there. We love laughing about getting on one another's nerves. We love laughing about just it's just healthy for a husband and a wife to to laugh at things and and just cut up and have some fun yeah. for the record i love your marriage humor that you throw out on <laughs> facebook we we have we have shared it in our group text on more than one occasion some of the things we, that you we try not to do it all the time but we do try to throw some in there and and we have we got some folks that say we don't think this is funny we wish you'd stick to your real stuff and we're we, we just try to be nice to them. We, we get inside. <laughs> <social Boo. laughs> okay. I don't know if you're not getting in trouble a little bit on social media. Are you even doing it right? You, you're not yeah, especially as, as Christians, you know, I mean, if you're not yeah. challenging a little bit, but we I didn't want to. We make well, a lot of folks uncomfortable with our willingness to talk about sex yes. on social media. Not really our, our workshops. We talk about sex too, but we make a lot of folks uncomfortable. And, and it's not, sometimes it's your Christian folks. Uh, and sometimes it's our church folks. Uh, we've had a lady tell us before, you, you know, you make us a little uncomfortable being our preacher and preacher's wife talking about these things. Uh, but I mean, it is God's beautiful gift to marriage. Why would we not want to talk about it? Especially when the world has misunderstood it. You know, it's a beautiful thing. And, and uh, when the enemy uses it, as That's a weapon not, against us. It's and it's like, a, that's never what it was supposed to be. Um, yeah, it's such a question. You know, we, we are amazed. We can do a podcast. We can do three podcasts in a row and then do a fourth one on sex. And it'll have three times the amount of, of listeners because people are just begging to know things that they're embarrassed to ask from a Christian standpoint. Um, and, and we get questions all the time that just, is this okay? Is, what do you think of this? And, and it's not anybody being rude or crude. It's just Christians aren't talking about these things enough and, and there's no reason to be embarrassed by them. And, and so, yeah, we, we're not, we're not embarrassed to talk about those things. It does make some folks uncomfortable, but that's okay. Well, everybody else is talking about them and they're not talking about them in the right way. That's exactly right. So, and somebody has got to tell it from the right way. Yeah. Family devotional time. Fulfilling, organized, fun. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Moses' words in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 8 to the children of Israel in the speech that closed out not only his ministry, but also his life, can be overwhelming at times and make us as parents feel like we could be doing more to disciple our children. In the fast-paced life that we live, 
We're usually just happy if everyone makes it out the door with their shoes on the correct feet. Planning and executing a family devotional time can seem out of reach. We're here to help. The Helping Healing Humor podcast has a tool to help you plan, organize, and execute a fulfilling and fun family devotional time for every member of your family from toddler to teen. As a member of the Ben and Travis Patreon community, you will have access to tons of content at a small price that will help you grow your spiritual life disciple your family, or even lead a small group Bible study. Patreon membership fees will help our podcast continue to be better and support the cost of creating and publishing the content that our Helping Healing Humor community has enjoyed. Go to www.patreon.com backslash Ben and Travis to sign up. Hit the link in the show notes for this month's special offer. I just want to remind our listeners that we're here with Trey and Lee from the Stronger Marriage Podcast with Trey and Lee. And I just loved your Pick 5 Valentine's Day Marriage Challenge. Uh, but I did want to ask a question. You mentioned in, in one of the podcasts I listened today about uh, snuggling up with your spouse and watching a movie that they want to watch. It may not be one that you per se want to see. So what movie is that for each of you? So maybe you've grown to like the movie. Maybe you're like, okay, it's not that bad. But uh, maybe at first you were a little, I don't know if I want to set through that. Yeah. Um, Honestly, after nearly 34 years of marriage, we have just learned to like what the other one likes. And Trey will watch Hallmark movies with me. Shh. <laughs> even, Guilty. Even kind of likes them. Yeah, no, I, I actually, uh, we've kind of, early in marriage, there's no way I'm watching a Hallmark movie. And now at Christmas, it's like, hey, we got to get signed up for the Hallmark channel so we can start streaming some movies. Uh, so, yeah, and, and she'll watch. Yeah, I'll watch the Gladiator type stuff. I oh, yeah. Like it, yeah. So. It's, there's not a whole yeah. lot. Neither one of us will do the scary slasher movies. It's like, don't ask us to do that. <laughs> But uh, pretty much everything else we're, we're down for. But, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes we just kind of, what do you want to watch tonight? You pick. And so we just take turns kind of deciding what we're going to what we're going to watch. We're trying to figure out where to go next on what what series that we're going to uh, gotcha. yeah, watch. So for Valentine's and he took me to see Redeeming Love because he knew I really wanted to see that. He really would have rather seen Ghostbusters yeah, yeah. or something, <laughs> which I would have gladly watched. But he he knew that Redeeming Love was up there on the top of my list. So. And it was I a, saw your post about it. Yeah. yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, I will say buckle up because I was an emotional wreck. <laughs> oh, I, I was, I was I, like gripping my seat like uh. I was glad they left the lights down for the for about five minutes after the movie you know it's good rolling the lights on and you're over here doing this now. yeah well Trey and Lee we're so thankful again for you joining us and putting up with our fun questions and uh <laughs> teaching us a little something and, and what you do for the kingdom is a tremendous thing and we just pray and hope that you guys keep doing that tell us a little bit again about how we can find you and uh, get get in touch with you about maybe coming and do seminars. Uh, you can find all our information at treyandlee.com, T-R-E-Y-A-N-D-L-E-A.com. And there you can find a link to our podcast, our upcoming workshops. Um, you can find links to our books. Just everything there is right there on that spot. And there's a place on there you can uh, message us and we'll send, you an inf- we'll send you an email that's got all our information about it. If you're interested in having us at your church, um, sit, let us know and we'll send you an email that's got everything in it from available dates to kind of what it costs and expenses and things along those lines. And it's a whole lot more simple than you think it is, but uh, it would bless your church. It would bless your community. Uh, by all means, uh, just do something when it comes to uh, churches, finding ways to bless your, your church and your community in the areas of marriage and family. All right, North Alabama, y'all got to make it happen, Captain. Amen. But thank y'all for joining us. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast. 
Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living, at benandtravis.com and receive all of our helping, healing, and humor extra content directly in your inbox. We look forward to having you join us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.